Hi, my name is Dean Brown. I am the designer for B-17 Flying Fortress Leader, uh, published by DBG. And I am here to do a short introduction to my new game, Spruance Leader, which is on Kickstarter right now. Spruance Leader is a solitaire Cold War naval game set in the 1980s. Uh, basically, you are in charge of naval task forces and are responsible for putting your task force together and going after Soviet tar uh, targets, Cold War targets. Um, to play the game, you select uh, one of several campaigns that are included in the game. Uh, for example, this one is North Atlantic Skirmishes. Uh, you have your home base here where your task force is going to leave from and then you draw random targets and you select a target to attack and depending on that target number uh, that's the sector on the map that you have to go to. Uh, the only downside is that <clears throat> Soviets have enemy task forces that are um, out there as well and the task force track indicates how many task forces are deployed you randomly place them so if let's say we were going to target nine um, you would traverse through the areas and you may have random encounters uh, that you have to deal with before you reach the target uh, the random encounters uh, when you have a random encounter you draw off you ro roll for the activity level modified based on the current uh, activity level track and then if you have a high or low activity level you flip it over and you determine you know what uh, you're going up against how many ships or subs um, you then place those on the tactical display um, and then you resolve combat until you get to the target area then you attack the target for this example, we're going up against an enemy ASW force. Uh, you can see here that there's a Kirov, two Utilays, and a Victor 1 submarine. You earn six victory points if uh, it's destroyed. And then you can see here that there's an Activity 1 and a Task Force 1, so that if we destroy the target, we slide our target tracks over one and eventually our ta random task forces is going to decrease as well as the activity level of our enemy forces. Once you've reached the target you then set up the ships on the tactical display so you could see here that I have my Kirov, my Utilize ship, two Utilize ships and then my Victor sub. You roll and you place them on the tactical display at various ranges and azimuths. I set up my task force here. I have basically there's three sections, a screening force, your main force, and then your supporting or protected forces. This is where um, things like ammunition ships or your carriers would go. Uh, your screening force at the end of each encounter suffers two stress levels. Um, we also get a detection one modifier, but you put uh, on each of these uh, enemy units determines who is going to attack. You draw chits from a cup, and your screening force has three chits for each position. Your main force would have two chits for each position, and your supporting or protective force would have one chit for each position. Uh, your screening force is fast, so for those of you who are familiar with the Leader series, that means that they get to perform their actions first, and then our enemy units move, and then they perform their actions, which is to attempt to detect your task force ships, and then if detected, then, uh, then they attack with uh, missiles and torpedoes. Prior to heading out on our mission, we select ordnance that we want to include with each of the ships. Um, one of the nice things about the Spruance class destroyers is that they can use RGM 109 
uh, missiles, the TASMs, uh, they have a range of six, which is basically as soon as we detect them, we can fire them. The harpoons, uh, which most of the ships have, have a range of four, which means that the ships have to be a little closer. And then uh, for against submarines, um, we have our ASROC launchers, which uh, work at ranges two or three, or we can fire torpedo at range one and two. So submarines have to be up pretty close in order to attack them. For this example, we on a previous turn, we detected the Kirov. Um, it's at detection level 2, so we get a plus 2 modifier. So uh, our Spruance destroyer is going to launch two TASMs uh, at the Kirov, and we rolled, and we rolled a 5 and a 6. So the Kirov has a missile defense value of 2, which means we would subtract 2, but we have detected at level 2, so that would be plus 2. And we have a plus 1 modifier on our, on our destroyer. So in this case, we have a 6 and a 7. So we have 2 hits against uh, the Kirov. Kirov requires 3 hits in order to destroy it. So we will put our damage to counter here which reduces its uh, values. In this example our Victor sub has detected the Cochrane, our destroyer, at detection level 1. Uh, so it's going to attack. It, it's at range 3 so it will attack. So we roll a 7 and we see here that a 6 and a 9 is a hit. We roll a 7, our Cochrane has a torpedo defense of 1, which runs it down to a 6. So we still suffer 1 hit. So we draw a damage counter uh, against a torpedo hit. And we have a fire, and we can take no actions until it is put out. Uh, which means we have to roll a repair value of 9 plus in order to put the fire out. So for the campaign, uh, depending on the campaign length uh, that you selected, you draw that many targets, um, you add up the total victory points uh, achieved as you attack those targets, and then you evaluate your mission score to determine how well you did in the campaign. There's also a carrier expansion where you can have a carrier with squadrons and you can use those squadrons uh, either to attack targets that on the tactical display or to attack um, targets uh, on land. For example, uh, this one for an airstrike, we would require seven hits to destroy the bomber airbase. Um, in this example, there was an enemy cap that was located uh, with the target. Uh, it's taken off. Um, so we bring our F-14 Tomcat squadron to deal with the enemy cap. We have two intruder squadrons that are going to do the attack on the airbase. And then we have our Prowler and our Hawkeye, which are going to provide, hopefully provide modifiers um, to our attack so that we can destroy the target. And finally, there's a SSN expansion where um, instead of having a task force, you could have um, a submarine with a submarine uh, commander. Um, that you have different ordnance skills, and uh, each submarine encounter has an um, environment card, which identifies you know thermal layer um, modifiers modifiers based on range for above and below the layer for surface detection. You can have your sub at three, one of three different levels, periscope, above layer, below layer. Uh, or you, you could be above the layer and have your toad array on, on another layer to detect subs that are beneath it. So in this example we have an enemy sub here that's deep, meaning it's below the layer. And we have uh, three ships 
the sub has detected our sub at detection level one, uh, but it's our turn. So we want to be able to spend our actions to uh, detect and fire on that sub before he can fire on us. Uh, so each commander has a set of actions that it can perform. There's some base actions and then some specialized actions based on the focus of that particular commander. So you can see here that uh, I have one fast action and two slow actions. My sub can either be in the fast spot or the slow spot. Fast means I act before, which is great, uh, but I suffer two stress at the end of each encounter, whereas if I'm slow, then I only suffer one stress. All right, so that is uh, Spruance Leader. Um, the rule book has been sent out and to playtesters and I have some feedback that I've incorporated so the rule book is pretty mature uh, there's several videos on how to play the game on Facebook uh, if you look under the uh, Spruance Leader Facebook group you'll be able to find that and I hope that you guys are interested in the game um, so if you have any questions, feel free to post them on a Kickstarter site or on the Facebook page. Thanks.